Hello everyone, this is Diane. It is time to get started on a new series called Beginner, Beginner's Journal Making. So we're going to start with a one signature, very simple journal. So this part of the video will just be making the journal, putting it together, and not embellishing it at all. And uh, it's as simple as can be, and it will have minimal supplies. And I will suggest a few different supplies that I'm not using, but I don't want to get too complicated with that and too confusing. So we're going to keep it simple. So like I said, it will be a one signature journal, but I have cut different sizes so that you can see them and you can decide what style, what size journal you would like to create. I have a cover that is, well I have two of them, that are like a traveler's notebook size. So they are four inches across, eight and a half inches high. So it's, you would cut your card eight by eight and a half. And this is just out of patterned paper, but it's a, a cardstock weight, a light cardstock weight. It's actually this one, the Jane Davenport. Uh, it comes in eight by nine and a half. I don't know if it's available. I've had it for a very long time. It's by American Crafts, and it was out in 2016. But, you know, any kind of heavier scrapbook paper, cardstock, you can use. This one, let's con just continue with the cardstock ones. This one is also the cardstock, and I can't remember the name of the paper pad, but I got it at Michael's, I believe, years ago. And it's 11 by eight and a half. So that's just a regular eight and a half by 11 size paper. And I just trimmed it to, I think I just trimmed the top off where the perforation is. So it's 11, or I mean 10 and three quarters. I just trimmed off quarter inch and folded it in half. So that's the long skinny style of journal that's popular right now. I thought that would be fun to do. And then I took a Tim Holtz one that is double sided. And this one is a 12 by 12 paper and I cut it down to nine inches and then just folded it in half. So it makes a four and a half by six inch cover. If you don't want to use patterned paper, you can take a file folder. And this is just half of a file folder, you know. You have the front and the back, it's just one of those pieces. I trimmed a little bit off that edge that was folded. And I have this cover. I kept the shape. You can trim that right off and have a, you know, you'd never know it was a file folder. And this one measures 11 and 3 quarters. And I'm just going to measure the part without the tab part because the pages will be down within this section. So it's seven and three quarters. 11 and three quarters by seven and three quarters. And I glued it to some wallpaper that I have. Or you could use scrapbook paper. You could Mod Podge um, tissue paper or napkin to it. Or you could leave it manila. And uh, it would be fun to collage on it and stamp on it and stuff like that. <clears throat> I did start cutting some papers to go inside the different sizes. But we are going to focus on one size so it doesn't get confusing. I just wanted to show you some of the options available. These go with what we're doing today. And I will work on these off camera so you'll be able to see progress on these as we go in different videos. So we're gonna start with one of these. I'm just gonna pick this one. And so we have a four by eight and a half inch journal cover. I did want to talk about selecting a journal cover like this because Jane Davenport has a lot of fun images. This would be a fun image on a journal cover, but when you fold it, she's at the back and this is plain, which is fine. If you want to collage on that, and then have this decorative piece on the back, that's fine. You can do that, absolutely. But if you want one of the fun images from the paper on the front, you just have to be careful about 
it has to be like the focal point on the right hand side of the paper there's another one in here this one that would work very well but I selected this one because although she is on the back this wonderful quote make time for your art is on the front and that makes a beautiful journal cover this one she's all over the whole page but her head and shoulders are on the front half I wouldn't want it so that her head and shoulders were in the middle. So that makes a nice journal cover. Just something to be aware of. All right, <clears throat> I started making this video once and had to start it over again. So I was selecting and cutting these papers on the video, but now it's already done. So as far as what kind of papers you use in the journal, any lined paper, plain paper, will do for writing on. So I get a lot of my papers from flea markets and thrift stores. So you can check there. If you don't have access to those stores, you can go to just wherever you would buy notebook paper, Walmart, Target, whatever. You can buy just notebook paper. You can buy sketchbooks. You can buy ledgers. Now at Walmart, you can get a ledger book with this green paper for 4 or $5. And I love to use these pages. I find a lot of these books at flea markets, so I have several different ones. So what I have here are the ledgers. You can see there's I used a couple different books because they're slightly different. And these lined papers, these actually came out of a, a bound book that I got at the flea market, but a composition book. Right now, composition books are still 50 cents at Staples because it's back to school time. So those kind of pages are great. Um, I have some plain papers. So this is just copy paper and I think this is too. But you could use like a sketchbook paper from the children's art department at Walmart. Um, these are budget books pages. You can sometimes find them at um, thrift stores which is where I found that. And also often found at thrift stores are these guest sign-in books. I don't know why they get bought and then turned into the thrift stores unused, <laughs> but I have uh, two pages of, the, of that. Also I wanted to add some color. It's a very colorful cover and I have all these neutral pages inside. You could use um, copy paper that's colored. You can buy a ream of copy paper at Walmart in multiple colors, brights and pastels. So add some colored paper in this bunch if you want to. Um, but I have two more pages taken from this. And I didn't want to use a lot of pages from, from this pad because they're thicker and it would just bulk it up. But I used two. And then I took some from the thinner paper pads. These are a lighter weight paper. And I chose some colorful ones that match. And then I just got a couple of children's book pages. And again, I looked for images that would not have the focal point right in the middle. So she was off to the side, and she was off to the side. And it doesn't matter that she's on the back side of it, because this is inside the book. So they're just book pages. You would see this. That's a nice side of the page. And then when you get over here, you see her. I hope that all makes sense. Please let me know if you have any questions whatsoever. <clears throat> I try to remember things that people, beginners, might not understand and try to make them clear, but uh, when you've been doing it as long as I have, sometimes you forget the things that you were confused about. So I'm just kind of separating them into piles. My two size uh, weights of pattern paper, my ledger, the small papers. It is really fun to add smaller sizes of paper and I want I want to do a little bit more of that. Um, it's a lined paper but it's the budget book. Lined paper. So all of these are lined papers. Just different types. And plain papers. So whatever you have. If you only have one notebook and it's like an art pad just take pages out of that, and they can all be that. It doesn't matter. Oh, and my book pages. 
Um, I think I want to add some more scrapbook papers that are smaller in size, just to add some variety. So I'm looking in my scrap bin. It's down here on the floor. Looking for something that will be the right color. It's kind of fun. This is two papers sewn together, two scraps. And they are, they're not eight and a half inches tall, so that's what I want, something smaller. And the paper would be eight inches wide, but I want it smaller, so I'm going to cut it. Let's see. Cut it seven inches, and if I want it smaller, I can trim it again. So now I have three pages that would be smaller in size. If you have a map paper, that's fun to include. So I wanted to make this, um, like I said, minimal supplies. Some plain paper and some scrapbook paper. And if you don't have scrapbook paper, use what you do have. So you could use wallpaper, wrapping paper, map paper, book pages like these. Um, stationary. Just look around your house and see what you have. If you've been collecting supplies, hoping that you could get up the nerve to make a journal, start getting those supplies out. Now I have my papers gathered and it's probably more papers than I want to use. So we're just going to start putting it together and stop when we think we're done. I would like to start with something colorful on the inside. I'll probably eventually do something to this so it's not just plain but we're just doing the basics right now so I'm going to start with not one of the heavier papers but a thinner paper and uh, I did not say that I cut the papers down slightly smaller than the cover so this is the largest size of paper this is four by eight and a half and this page is three and three quarters by eight and a quarter. So it's just a quarter inch smaller all the way around. And you should also be aware that as you put papers together to go into this, the more papers you have, the more that the center ones will poke out. You'll see as we go. All right, so we have one. Let's put a lined paper in and a plain paper and we can add another patterned paper. I cut that one too wide. I want it to be three and three quarters. I cut the height the right way. Yep. And of course you can rearrange your papers if you think you've got too many plain ones all together. Once you have it all put together, change it. Um, let's see, another lined paper. And let's do a book page in here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I thought 13 might be a good number. I think that's 12 right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 
14. So you can see that they're sticking out there. So one thing you can do is, sometimes I do, take the center few pages and trim them down a little bit so they're not sticking out. Let's see what they look like in the cover. They are sticking out beyond the cover, so I am going to trim some. So some of these pages can go in the other cover that I cut. So I just open it up and this page is narrow enough. I'm going to take this one and trim a little bit off. And that works. I think that's the only one I need to trim. Yep, that works. <clears throat> okay, now we have all our pages in here. We have, most of them are full size, and we have this one that's a little shorter, and this one that is quite a bit smaller. I could trim that off so it's just a page, but I like making a fold there. So now what? We have it put together, but what do I do with it? Now comes the part that pe where people get intimidated. We're going to sew it together. Now I'm going to use a simple pamphlet stitch in this, and I'm not even going to measure. I'm going to just poke holes. You can do a three hole or a five hole. To keep it simple, we're going to do a three hole today. Here are the supplies you need something to poke a hole. These are all the same. They're Tim Holtz by Tonic Studios. Um, I've, I've, I've thrown one away because this is what happens over time as you're holding it, you're rubbing it, and then this all comes off. So mine got really shabby and I threw it away, but I still have several. I keep one or two in here and then I keep a little kit together that I can just grab and take with me out into the living room when I want to sew a journal together. So these are the Tim Holtz ones and you slide the point out when you're using it and make sure you put it back when you're done. This one I got from Stampin' Up. I don't know if they still have them. I've had it for years. This one has a little rubber cap that goes over it. The problem with that is you have to keep track of that. If you lose it, you have a sharp point that you can't cover. And I don't know what else is available for that. Um, someone gave me a book binding kit that came with some wax threads and this. So I could use this for it, but I, don't, I wouldn't go too far up when I poke the hole because the farther up you go, the shaft is wider and it would make the hole big. I have an awl. I don't think I have it right here. I used to use an awl when I made stuffed jointed teddy bears for putting the joints in and it was, that is way too big. The shaft is way too big and it would make the holes too big. So you just want something that will make a small hole. Okay, so you have something to make a hole with. Then you need a thread. Some people use embroidery floss and it makes it pretty. Some people use um, baker's twine. I like to use a waxed thread because the wax in the thread holds it. It doesn't loosen. And I want to use it, use a waxed thread. So these are the ones that came in the book binding kit that someone gave me. A variety of colors you can see. That one's almost gone. But on Amazon I found a whole package of colored wax threads. So I will link this below. But I use neutrals more than anything. I do like to use the fun colored ones and I use those to make um, dangles on, the, on my spines too. So I wanted to make sure I had more neutral ones. So I found this on Amazon also. So I will link this set of colored and this big cream colored one on, on my, in, the, in the description. So, for this, I think I'd like to use a fun bright pink because of the colors here. So, 
we'll use this one. For a needle, you need something that's not too wide because you don't want to make your hole bigger, but the eye has to be big enough for this wax thread to fit through. When I'm done sewing a signature together, I always leave the leftover thread in my needle because it makes it easier for me to find the needle in my kit. I should have just a little thing to stick it in, but I wasn't that smart. So now I'm going to cut my thread. So this is what you need. The needle, the poker, and the thread. Another tool I keep handy is my husband's old pliers, or not, they're not pliers, but I use this to grab my needle and pull it out when it gets stuck when I'm uh, sewing a journal together because sometimes I really have a hard time pulling the needle through. But I don't think we'll have that trouble with this simple journal. So how much thread should I cut? I measure three times the length of my book. So that would be right there. And then I cut it a little bit more. And it's way more thread than you need. This is more thread than you need. But better safe than sorry. And this is waxed. So I can kind of pinch it down just to make it skinnier to go through the eye of my needle. I did have a needle that had a better eye, but I lost it. But this works. There. I'll show you. This is the pack of needles that I have. Um, two slash zero and one. I don't know what all that means. Double swallow brand. Swallow. I thought it said don't swallow. Well, no. <laughs> So, you know, you can find needles pretty much anywhere. Now, another thing you might want is something to clip your pages together so they don't slip once you have them arranged where you want. If you have different sizes of pages, you might want this page in the center or up at the top or down at the bottom, staggered. I think I'm gonna leave that one in the center and maybe move that one up. I think I'm gonna go ahead and include another little page so I can have one down. So I'll put this one right here and down lower. So now we have 14 folded pages plus the cover to sew through. Okay. So you can take a clip, a binder clip. Um, you can take a little clip like this, which I got at the Dollar Tree. I think that'll work for now. One thing you want to make sure you do is make sure all the pages are down in that crease and not, you'll see what I mean if you start making these journals that sometimes they can be puffed up a little bit and then you're not gonna get your stitches right in the center. So I make sure, kind of fold the pages so they kind of ha they're forced into that crease and then put the clips on. I usually put one at the bottom on one side and at the top on the other. I used to put them on all four, so you can do that if that makes you feel more comfortable, but I'm fine with this. Normally I would measure and have my spaces even, but to keep it simple, we're not going to, we don't care, it doesn't matter. If you are doing multiple signatures in a, like a one inch or bigger spine, you might want to measure and have them all look the same. But this doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. And it's going to be a three hole punch. Now I feel like this isn't all the way down in there like it should be. So I'm gonna take this clip off and get it down in there and put that back on. Because when I open it, you can I can feel that it's not the way I want it. Okay, now it feels good. I'm going to just poke a hole in the center, close to the center as I as my eye thinks. And then 
just a little bit of a distance down from the top. How about right there? So maybe an inch down. And an inch down from the bottom, or inch up from the bottom. Now I have three holes poked. I'm going to take my needle and thread and go down. It depends on where you want your thread. If you want your thread, your knot, to be on the inside, you start on the inside. If you want it to be on the outside, you start out here. I am actually thinking I want it on the outside for this one because this is a one signature journal, so the threads will be out here and they can be decorative with this pretty pink color. So I'm going to start on the outside and come up and leave a good long tail so it's longer, it extends beyond the bottom of the book. Then you can go either up or down, it doesn't matter. I'll just go down and come up through that hole and pull in opposite directions to make sure that stitch is tight and then come up, go past the center hole, go right up past it and go to the top hole come up and again tighten your threads then you're going to go back to the center and go back in that hole where you started so this thread the starting thread is on the front side of this thread along the seam my needle just came up on that side. I want it to be on the opposite side. So I'm going to go back up and come out on the opposite side of the thread. Sometimes I've done it where it was very difficult to get it to come up on the opposite side. So you can come up on the same side and then just stick it under and pull it through so that you end up with this thread in the middle and then the two ends on opposite sides. So when you tie the knot, it's gonna capture that middle thread. So now you can just tie a double knot. You can tie it in a bow if you want to. And pull it nice and tight. And because it's wax, it's gonna hold. It's gonna be really hard for you to untie that knot. And there we go. So I can cut this thread and I have this hanging down, so I could hang little beads on that, tie little beads on that if I wanted, or tie it in a bow. It'd be nice if, um, if I left longer threads, if I wanted to tie it in a bow, so you could still have long dangly things, or just tie it in a bow. and just make it look pretty, like that. I'm just gonna let it hang, like that. I can trim those later if I want to, or string beads on it. So that is how you put a single signature journal together. It has a lot of pages in it for a one signature journal, so it wants to pop open. But you can um, put something heavy on it to help train it to lay flat, and you can always tie something around it once it's completed. This is done. You can leave it just like this, put it in your purse, use it, glue stuff in it, make notes in it, make lists in it, write in it, uh, clip coupons in it, whatever you want to do. Or you can come back for the next video and we will add a few very simple pockets and make some tags and cards to put in, keeping it very, very simple. So I hope that this was helpful to you. Tell me if you have any questions. You can ask them in the comments below. And I uh, hope you'll come back to see the next step if you wanted to embellish this a little bit. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Have a creative day.